this is probably the part that you guys see in my videos and you're like, whoa, his room is cool. Maybe you guys don't do that, but like, this is the stuff that catches your eye. It's where the most trinkets are. It's where the most memories are. It's just more interesting than the rest of my room. Like, I'm sorry guys, you're cool, but like, this is where it's at. This is like Times Square of New York City, I guess. Yeah, that's a good analogy. All right, so this is the desk area. First off, we're gonna say hello to Mingo. Hello, Mingo. All right, so window, desk, drawers, drawers, and like a shelving cabinet, bulletin board, and yeah, that's sort of like the skeleton of this area. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the center of all this, which is the bulletin board, and what this is, is a collection of aesthetic things and also little memories. And so the way my brain works is there's just, just certain things that light up the part of my brain that likes design. And for some reason, I just think some things look really, really, really cool and it's inspiring for some reason, I guess. <laughs> An example of that would be this. It's literally just cactus seeds that I bought on Amazon, but I like the aesthetic and the design of it. So I was like, all right, we're pinning it up on here. Even these matches, I just like the design and the aesthetic, the candle, not the candle, that's a camel. <laughs> Same with like this, there's just like little things here and there that I find to be inspiring. So the bulletin board on the outside, we have my pin collection and it outlines all of it. Nine, six, eighteen. I thought I figured out what love was, but then I realized it didn't even make sense. Maybe it was happiness, but I sort of made this chart. And I guess I thought that freedom of time allowed you to obtain aesthetic, or you can travel, you can live somewhere beautiful, mountains, rivers, that's what I wanted to have. Positive mental health, sleep, meditation, I guess would lead to that. Physical health, running, and I guess that's it triathlons I was interested in that I also thought I needed kids and a wife to share the life with me freedom of finance gives me time to travel ability to live somewhere beautiful but I realized that it cannot give me love or mental well-being but I realized that finance is would give opportunities for my kids to make them happy and successful in their own terms which makes me happy and that was the cycle I figured out which I guess I called love, but maybe it's happiness looking back. But yeah, that was over two years ago when I wrote that. I think that was the beginning of me diving into philosophy and psychology. These were also my goals. I think I wrote this down three years ago. Build an advanced town. I wanted to like create a neighborhood or a town or some sort of thing, a million dollars before I'm 20. But then I crossed that out and wrote 22. So I think I wanted to be more patient with it and not worry about the money. <laughs> I wanted to have a Porsche, a McLaren, sub four minute mile, to be with someone amazing, to be fluent in French and Spanish again someday, to be respected and to change people's lives. So two, three years ago, these were my goals. I guess it's just a nice reminder of where I was back then. <laughs> San Francisco. This is actually an image of my brain when I was a kid. I don't know if you can see that, but this is my brain. <laughs> um, some designs for Perspectopia, an old postcard of the metro system in Paris. Whoops, where I lived as a kid for a lot of my summers there and growing up. This did it here. This was a, uh, <laughs> a collage that I made in French class of things that I wanted in life. Moving down, we have some more designs and sketches of things I thought looked cool. Perspectopia ideas. A lot of this area is just like aesthetic. And just, I like the way it all looks, I guess. Um, the state championship race bib, wherein we won states last year. Perspectopia sticker pack. I like the way these stamps look. This is just like a big aesthetic for me. And when I look up at it, it just inspires me. Uh, so yeah, moving forwards or Technically moving sideways or backwards. We have this area Which just has some like post-it notes designs drawings sort of like the similar theme I'm probably gonna reorganize this area because I don't really like it I don't even really like supreme anymore. So that's just going in the trash um, And then we go up here where we have a lot of little trinkets This salt is from Austria the camel and this little genie bottles from Morocco. I found this golf ball 
um, some matches. I got this in Costa Rica. Not sure why I have this doll. Eagle, some more little figurines, a lighter from Costa Rica, some matches, a rock, some salt, some origami that I made. Um, a really small thing of Tabasco, which I also have over here, a really small thing of toothpaste. Um, so yeah, these are just a bunch of trinkets. They have some value and just memories of trips. And then a bunch of Perspectopia stickers right here. Moving up, we have some rocks and things I found at the beach. And then Mingo, the homie, the real one, always looking after me. Moving over here, this is where we have some more space to fill up. Like I haven't really filled up this area yet, um, but we have some medals from my races in France. Uh, a cartoon that was drawn of me when I was a kid. That time I got a 97 on my psych test and I was really proud of it, so I put it on my wall. <laughs> this was sent to my P.O. box, it's Perspectopia, and it's just a really incredible design and drawing, so I put it on my wall. You already know, <laughs> this was me and my dad in Notre Dame when I was a kid. Uh, some poppets, and then a newspaper. I also kept a note from one of my Patreons up here. And then moving over here, we have some more like things that are aesthetically pleasing for me. I made this in sixth grade. This is the first piece of art that I purchased with my own money. And I still really like it, actually. Uh, me and my grandpa in Paris when I was a kid were on the Seine. Some more race bibs and just... This is actually some splatter art that I did that I thought was really cool. Not sure why I have a dollar bill, but it's there. This is a shoe concept design I had. I want to collaborate with Nike someday and make a shoe. And this was what I had sketched up for that one spring collection. Petit Nicolas. I read this when I was a kid. Um, some photos. I have all the songs for an album I want to make one day. Um, Austria. Ukulele from my uncle. And planet saving information from advisory board crystals. I feel like this is like the famous section of my room because you guys see this in my videos. But we also have the famous discipline or regret light box. Uh, I think this really resonates with people. And it's a quote that I use for all areas of my life. With anything we approach in life, we have two choices. We have two decisions. We have different ways of thinking about it. And usually, or I guess not every time, but for the most part, the decision that's probably best for you is going to require a little bit of discipline, but it's going to pay off in the end. But the other decision that probably isn't as good for you in the long term, it's an easier decision, but it's probably one you're going to regret. And I guess for me, it's a reminder that I have this incredible opportunity in audience and that it takes a little bit of discipline to be focused when you're a teenager. It would be really easy for me to get complacent and to just chill out and to go party and just not continue to push myself to do more. <laughs> and it's not that I'm remotely interested in doing that, but this is just a reminder that I will regret that. If I don't take all of the opportunities that I'm so fortunate to have now, I will regret it. So I have to go into the bit of discipline that it takes to, you know, go to bed early, to wake up early, to not go out and fool around and to just work hard. As a teenager, it's not like the most fun thing technically, I guess, if that makes sense. It's not that I don't enjoy it, but there are sacrifices I have to make which require discipline. Anyway, I'm probably getting too deeply into it, but this is why I have it there. It's a reminder and it's pretty much front and center in all the work that I do. All right, moving on. We have this lamp from BenQ. Shout out to them, they sent this to me. It's really nice, you just tap it, it turns on and off. We have this quote from Gary Vee. It's possible the question is, are you hungry enough and willing to mm, 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 or are you soft? Yeah, this is a pretty uh, extreme quote, I guess. I guess the language is, but it's a reminder that anything is possible and it's up to you. Are you willing to you know, hurt enough? Are you willing to sacrifice enough for the dream? Because it is possible. And yeah, I look at that every day. I'm just like, damn, you don't have an excuse. Anyway, two quotes from Marcus Aurelius. Confine yourself to the present. Uh, it's just a nice reminder to be present and consciously aware and that events are objective, we cause anxiety. Focus on what you can control. Yeah, I guess I can go through and just read a lot of these quotes. I won't explain why I put all of them on there, but I'll just go through and read some of them. Yeah. All right, so this was actually one of my own. Everything you do matters more than you think it does. This is a goal of mine. I wanna write a book someday. Actually, pretty soon. I'd like to write a book soon. It's hard to have ideas and it's easy to give up. 
It's better to fail than to procrastinate. It's how you deal with adversity that determines your ultimate success as opposed to how you deal with success that determines your ultimate success. Bill Ackman, I really like that. Everything is as simple and as complicated as you want it to be. I wrote this one day when I was overthinking something. <laughs> um, goals have to be unrealistic to be effective. And whoops, this one is really important for me because all of my goals are pretty crazy. And I guess like more recently getting into Stanford, getting a million subscribers on YouTube, the goals have to be so crazy because when goals are outrageous and exciting and seem impossible to other people, it fills you with this crazy just energy and excitement to be like, holy cow, that's kind of impossible, but let me go do it. And that fills you with this energy that just propels you towards it. And in my case, the crazy unrealistic goals have actually paid off. And so this is just a little reminder for that. Here's a good one. Make mistakes of ambition and not mistakes of sloth. Develop the strength to do bold things, not the strength to suffer. Do not work harder when the solution is working smarter. Look to nature for ideas and designs. Um, that's another thing I've learned, that a lot of the answers are actually in nature and that we try to look for the answers in the wrong places and sometimes you just have to look to what nature has done because nature is sort of the ultimate selector of what is the right thing to do, if that makes sense, because over time nature has corrected itself because if it wasn't efficient or it wasn't effective, it would have died out. And if you step outside humanity, the way nature works has been going on for millions of years, and that's because it's gotten to this point. You know, maybe I'm over explaining it, but nature, there are a lot of answers to be found in nature, designs to be found in nature. Yeah. <laughs> Give gifts that people will either use often or look at often. Some stickers, designs, um, the 80 20 principle or Pareto's law, lyrical lemonade, some cranes that I made. This is actually really cool. Um, Galica is like one of my favorite old, I was about to say board game, but this is most definitely not a board game, um, arcade game. I love Galaga, and yeah, so I bought a mini version that I play in between editing breaks. So I'll edit for 25 minutes, and I'll play a game of Galaga and try to see how high of a score I can get. But I only limit myself to one try so that each game is special and that I don't end up spending my whole afternoon playing Galaga. <laughs> All right, so some more quotes. Consider yourself a genius in everything you do in life and carry that confidence with you whenever you go. I think this quote could be easily misunderstood as arrogant or narcissistic. And the funny thing is it really goes back to my other video talking about not letting society define you in certain ways. If you view yourself as a genius in everything you do, it means you're giving yourself more confidence in what you do, which means you'll probably be better at it. And I found that it actually helps me out in certain areas. The thing is, the mind is a lot more powerful than you think, and the things you tell yourself, they affect you a lot more than you think as well. And I've been doing a lot of research into that recently, the power of self-talk, and especially with regard to athletes and people in business, and it's just really, really important. And so if you can carry a confidence within yourself that's not arrogant or narcissistic, it can actually really help you out. So that's what I wrote that there as a reminder. I'd rather fail than be average. That's sort of how I approach everything in life. Just go all in. Fix the things you do every day. That's with regard to habits. Um, fix the little things you do because it'll have a pretty profound impact on everything else you do over time and sort of like compound interest. If you fix little things over time, it's gonna compound to be something incredible. And that's what I try to do by fixing the little things and habits I do every day. Um, I'm into fashion. <laughs> so the goal to have Grailed follow me on Instagram, Benjamin Franklin, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. If I learned one thing in 2020, 
Um, it was my sleep schedule, which has not been that great in the past, but this year I actually formalized a routine where I go to bed pretty early and I wake up very, very early and it's worked for me. Yeah, it's just a reminder of that because I was inspired by Benjamin Franklin. Be competitive with yourself, not others. This one is very important. Comparison is very, very toxic, <laughs> I think. And then over here, we are not seeking the meaning of life. What we are really seeking is the experience of being slash feeling alive. And then I wrote the question, what makes you feel alive? And I think it's true, like the whole, what is the meaning of life is, I don't know, I think that to a certain degree, meaning and finding purpose in life is very important, but I think it's really those moments where you feel alive that make life so special. And I think that's what we're really looking for as well. I don't know, there's a balance. It's an interesting conversation or something to get into in another video, but it is those moments where you just feel incredible emotion and just feels like life, you know? Whether it's like a beautiful sunset or a trip or a race or a special moment with someone, it's those moments where everything else fades away and you're not thinking about the future or the past. You're just fully present. You're just there and you're feeling it and you're taking it all in and it just feels so incredible and it's almost hard to describe, but you're so present and I think that's what we're really searching for at the end of the day because i do think we spend <laughs> and even i struggle with this i spend a lot of time thinking in the future or even living in the future thinking about what i'm going to do instead of focusing on what i'm doing now because that's what ends up being what i will do is what i do now <coughs> Ugh. bless me um if you said bless you thank you and i think it's just natural as a human to either live in the future in the past but not to be fully present when you are fully present you feel incredible and that's just those moments that feel like life and everything just comes together and i should probably stop talking because i'm kind of rambling at this point but yeah i hope that makes sense um yeah so my room i made this out of origami it took me two and a half hours it is made of 35 pieces of paper this is really cool it's like one of my proudest achievements i guess in life <laughs> Camera lenses, little trinkets. My great grandfather, his name is Maximilian. I'm actually named after him. My full name is Maximilian, and he was a filmmaker in World War II. So, yeah, I have a filmmaker in my family. I'm named after him. Rest in peace. That's just a little memory of where I come from, my heritage. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's me and my dad. Another photo of me as a kid. And then we have. Some currency, Singapore dollars. So yeah, this whole area over here, I'm starting to fill it up with more items that you guys have actually been sending me. So if you didn't know, here one second, um, I have a PO box. Uh, I pay a monthly fee so that you guys can send me things, which sounds kind of weird and like typical YouTuber, basically. I have a PO box. So if for some reason you guys want to spend money and send me something, I will put it in my room. So this was sent to me by one of you guys. Thank you very much. Um, and a lot of these other things have actually been sent to me. So if you want to have something in my room, you can send it to me and I'll put it in my room somewhere. It'll be in the description of this video, or it's in the description of all my videos, the address to my PO box. Um, so yeah, if you want to send me a letter or send me a trinket or anything, it'll go in my room. Thank you in advance if you do decide to. If not, I totally get it because that's like money and time and energy and yeah. All right, moving upwards. Uh, some like trophies, whatever. You guys sent me this in a PO box as well. All of this was sent to me. Shout out Jerry for sending me this. Yeah, this was sent to me by you guys. Moving towards this side. Love the design of these Coke bottles. Oh, we also have this, a Capri Sun bag. Like it's a real bag made out of Capri Suns. Super, super cool. Um, and then over here I have some old vintage Sports Illustrated magazines. Uh, yeah. Then moving down, I'm probably gonna reorganize all this soon, but we have some books that I've read. Um, we have a frog, you already know. <laughs> I made this phone case, it's a collage and an amp for my guitar, and then just some like books for school, battery Macbeth for my AP Lit class. So, uh, yeah. 
I don't know, that was, I feel like that was like one of the hardest videos I've ever had to make. There's like a million things to talk about, a million stories to tell, and... <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I hope that you enjoyed. Oh, also, I got a bonsai tree. So, yeah, that's a, it's a important centerpiece to my room now, okay? I guess there's only one last thing to do in this video. You guys already know. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure showing you around my room. You know, sometimes I feel this energy. And there's something magical about this room here that makes me just feel like, oh, you know? And uh, I don't know how to describe it, but sometimes I'm just, just start moving, start feeling the flow, and then sooner enough, later you know that it's Yeah, just a 17 year old kid in his room is trying to change the world, I guess. As cliche as it sounds, I'm gonna try anyways. And uh, I'm gonna have fun in the process, and I'm gonna dance, try to enjoy my life, and try to help you guys enjoy your life. And, <laughs> and yeah, thank you for watching. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to catch my breath. And uh, a big thank you to my Patreons for supporting my videos. The link is in the description if you want to see the behind the scenes of all of my videos. If you want to help support my business, Perspectopia, the link is in the description. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, the link is in the description. If you want to check out any of my other videos, link is in the description. If you think something will look cool on my wall, uh, you can send it to my P.O. Box, which is also, wait for it, wait for it, like in the link. No, in the link in the description, that doesn't even make sense. There is a link in the description. It's not a link, wait, the address is in the description. All right, go chase your dreams. Don't conform to any arbitrary rules. Have fun, do what you love. Uh, go make someone's day, and I'll uh, see you in Perspectopia. Bye. <laughs>